Very low probability of recession, no threat of de-anchoring inflation expectations. Is that your view too? Uh, actually, I have to say we are well on a very similar page. I think uh, the interesting thing for the markets is that market is very dovish. Market is expecting a lot of bad news. And I suspect news, uh, economic data, earnings data is disappointing. It's underwhelming, but it's not disastrous. Patrick? I'm a complete opposite end of the spectrum. I think the market is is not expecting enough bad news. It's way too optimistic about the prospects for the US. It's way too optimistic about the prospects for China. And actually, Europe is a sideshow now. We used to we're worried about Europe. Europe is relatively self-contained. It's getting hit on trade. But actually, no, I think he's ridiculously optimistic. Well, let's talk about Europe specifically, David. Actually, if you look at things right now, the data in its totality isn't as bad as, say, manufacturing might suggest. Service sector, still OK. Labour market, somewhat resilient. Can we be somewhat constructive about the continent in the same vein that President Draghi just was? Yes, you can be. You just look at the GDP figures with, with solid contributions in the domestic sector. You mentioned the labour market. You mentioned, you know, um, above inflation, you know, real wages there. Actually look at bank lending statistics, even with the, you know, the, the negative rates and all these kind of, the kind of things are actually, actually helping us significantly in some parts of the bank lending um, view. Absolutely, Europe is, is vulnerable to, to, to China. We all wait uh, for the next you know, uh, you know, batch of data to see where, where that is going. Arguably, on the, on the aspects of the Chinese you know, expansion, which matter most for Europe, yeah. you've seen a reasonable you know, uh, bounce or stabilization at the, at the very least, which should help coincidence, coincident data in Europe. You've seen the composite PMI in Europe stabilize as, as well around this. So, look, the ECB will need a lot more bad news. It may be coming, but a lot more bad news before it, it acted more than it did today. As some people said coming into this that maybe the biggest metric of success today wasn't the euro, wasn't the bond market. It was what happened with the banks after the decision and during the news conference. The banks are trading lower. We've talked about a tiered deposit rate of the UCB many times now. Maria, it just doesn't seem to be gaining any traction on the governing council whatsoever. Do you expect it to happen anytime soon? Uh, actually, unfortunately not. I think, uh, I mean, our views are We've been underweight European banks for a long, long time, and we see very little changing. European banks need higher interest rates, steeper year cur curve, and given the economic situation in Europe, we are very far away. From Patrick? Um, European banks, well, exactly what Maria said. I mean, how are they going to, to generate earnings? And while lending is picking up slightly, mm. it is only very, very slightly. I mean, is it 2.7% 2, 2 mm. growth in lending? And the risk is, of course, that as we're seeing the rest of the global economy slow down, so obviously you see the global manufacturing PMI in negative territory now, is when does that imp the appetite for lending is actually likely to fade because why should I want to invest hmm. when I'm seeing demand fall? Yeah. Uh, John, John, we're coming to the end of, of Draghi's term, and one of the, the, the keynotes of, of his addresses is, is obviously urging, begging policymakers <laughs> to do reforms and use fiscal. Uh, We've you know, had fiscal eight stimulus. years of that. Eight we? years of it, and every time you, yeah, you, uh, you get it. And if you just have to look at the ECB's own financial stability report, the banks are weak because of structural issues. Right? Yes, the negative rates arguably hurt them in some ways, but it also encourages lending in others. Without the structural reforms, which is not their responsibility, you're not going to get this kind of you know, full earning cycle and the kind of realization of, of all this very depressed valuation in European banks, and they'll still remain what they have been, a value trap.